Hi, my name is Sarah LaCarrie. I recently graduated from Texas Christian Universities with my master, which is where this research took place as well. So our research focused on Brazilian free-tail bat fatalities in both Texas and California. So just a very brief background on why we chose these locations and the species. So in Texas and California, the Brazilian free-tail bat is the most common bat fatality at wind energy facilities. It's also very interesting to study at these locations because they have differing migratory patterns. In California, it's a non-migratory species, and we're assuming the sex ratio for this population is about 50-50, which is seen in other non-migratory bat species, whereas in Texas, it is the complete opposite. They are a migratory species that overwinters in Mexico and comes to the U.S. during the spring and summer to give birth to pups and rear them in their large maternity caves. And because this is one of the main reasons for their migration, this sex ratio tends to be skewed for the migratory population with some caves that they looked at being about nine to one female to male. So we were very interested to see if this did impact the sex ratios we saw at these facilities. So because of this, we had a few questions. So one, were these sex ratios stable over time? So we looked at carcasses collected from wind energy facilities during post-construction post -construction monitoring surveys to see if they varied between years. We were also curious to see if there were differences between states, because as I mentioned before, they have different sex ratios for these populations. So we wanted to see in California, was the sex ratio about 50-50 male-female, as we would expect? And then in Texas, we were curious to see if it was more female skewed again, because this population tends to be very female skewed. And the overall, the best outcome we were looking for is to see if there was a consistent time when female fatalities were most prominent seasonally, and this could possibly inform things such as curtailment. And curtailment is when they shut off wind energy production and stop the turbine blades from moving, and this can be used to help reduce fatalities because the bats will not have collision fatalities if the blades are stationary. So again, the best outcome, can we see if there's a time when females are most at risk to then curtail during these periods? Because this will help both bats since females are the limiting sex for population growth and stability. And it's also very appealing to wind energy facilities themselves because they can also then curtail for shorter periods while maximizing their conservation outcomes. While we were going into this research, just we wanted to see if it was stable. We found that in California, it did appear to be stable. Texas became a little more interesting because of how the data came in. We had gaps in times and so many different locations. It was hard to tell if it was stable over time. And then for sex ratios, California, we did see the sex ratios were about 50-50 female to male as we expected. Whereas in Texas, we actually saw quite a bit of variation. And I think that's what comes into some of the thing, the thing I thought was most significant, most interesting about our research was the things we found out that we didn't pose questions about. So we'll start with Texas because I started there. So with Texas, we saw that it did vary between locations. So our question became like, so why are we seeing this? In one location, it was significantly male skewed. And the two other locations, one was significantly female skewed where the other was not different from 50-50. And the, the location that was male skewed was a bit more north than the other two locations by about like 200 kilometers. So our question became, was this a difference because of the differing locations? So we started to look at the landscape because we expected the sex ratio to be homogenous across all of Texas. And what we found was that when we look at, for example, roosting locations, they tend to roost in either large maternal caves or are under bridges. So when we mapped out caves versus bridge loose roost locations, we found something very interesting with that one north location that was male skewed, is it is surrounded by four different bridges within 50 kilometers that are known or expected to have taper population, sorry, Brazilian free cell bat populations. And when we did a literature review to look at sex ratios for your bridges versus your caves, uh, we found that your bridges tended to be more male skewed to not different than 50-50, whereas your caves tended to be more female skewed, which could be one of the reasons why we saw a difference in these locations, because that one had so many bridges around it, it might have been what caused that unusual male skew we were not expecting to see. So while that's not something we expected to find was these differences in locations, it was very interesting and led to a lot more questions about how possible roost locations could impact sex ratios of fatalities at wind energy facilities. We also saw something interesting in California, but for this one, instead of it being due to possibly a difference in location geographically, we think this might have been a difference in timing. So one thing that we saw with California was that it appeared that the sex ratio, not sex ratio, sorry, the peak of fatalities overall shifted. So normally we would have expected to see peak fatalities in September and October, which we did see for the first two years at the first location. 
But then for the next two years at the second location, they actually peaked between May and June, which we could not think of what would have caused that. Through all the literature, it's usually September. In this location, it would be September, October, which would line up with movements and pups being on the wing with their parents, increasing population size and increasing fatalities. So we then were looking at it. We couldn't, we didn't think it was location wise. It possibly could have been uh, one theory was that possibly the second location was a slightly closer to a reservoir that the bats might use to feed off of. So that could have been why we saw a peak in that summer while they were feeding. But we weren't quite sure of that hypothesis only because the two locations were within four kilometers of each other. And these bats can fly over 50 kilometers in a single night just for foraging. So we would have expected to see that shift in location one as well in the first two years. So then we kind of started wondering, was this a difference in timing? Because the first two years were 2018, sorry, 2017, 2018, and then 2019, 2020. And what we found is it might've been a difference in time and what was happening in the environment. Because in 2019 and 2020, it appears that there was a oak moth outbreak that occurred within the same county with the oak moths emerging between May and June, which aligns up with when we saw this peak in fatalities, which we could expect to see because Brazilian free tail bats, one of their main food sources are moths, and they have been shown to change their foraging behaviors in response to large moth outbreaks. So this had been documented before in California. And while it's not what we set out to look for, we didn't even think of making a hypothesis, for example, for when the peaks would happen because it's so well documented. It's almost always during those months. It was something we saw that led to further questions and uh, further research possibilities for, for example, we could look at the stomach contents of the bat carcasses they collected and see if they differed between our first location to the first two years versus our second location for the next two years to see if there was an increase in moth consumption during those times and the fatalities. So I think those were some of the most significant things we found and they weren't the things we were looking to find. I think the lesson I learned from this research and the lesson I hope that the readers take away as well, and I kind of hinted at it before in my other answer is that sometimes when you're doing research, some of the most exciting things you find weren't necessarily the questions you set out to answer. You sometimes end up finding these completely out of left field, like seeing this peak, that peak fatality shift, as well as just seeing differences in locations and you expect them to be the same within the same state. And that it's not necessarily bad if you can't find what you're setting out to find. We wanted to see if there was consistent time when females were most at risk. We weren't able to find that, but we did find other interesting things that led to further questions and further research possibilities.